Hello there, Tuesday afternoon, start of a camp. We're just in the borders of Scotland. I'll turn round and show you the views. Stunning. That's actually the border back there. I'll do the uh, border stone pictures in the morning. There was just too many people around them because obviously it's the, it's the height of the afternoon. I'm out, I'm out with Graham on this camp, there he is. Graham Bassnitz, Graham's Wild Camping. Beautiful start to a walk, isn't it? There's the reservoir from the start of the walk. And from this view, you can see the Scottish flag there. And that's actually the border. Ah, for the sounds of the babbling brook. Isn't it beautiful? Going to be plenty of water on the top. There's the reservoir, Echo Crags. And we'll look around to the full beauty of the Cheviot Hills with the Scottish border. There's your Scottish border. And there's our wonderful Cheviot Hills with the big Cheviot Mastiff there. So lucky in Northumberland, we really are. One, loads of cars in the border car park, but only one car that was unmanned. So somewhere in these vast moors is one walker or two walkers. You just get it to yourself. Hey, hey! Surprisingly steep and short, but hey! My first time on Carter Pike. We're going to have a look at the cairn. Like everybody else has said, you can sit on here and shelter from the wind because there's always a good side. Somebody's got a little memorial slate there, look. Welcome to the Cheviots. Blisteringly sunny hot day, 22 degrees, and I'm still sinking in the in the crouch. Buzzard crags. We'll have a look around this. Look how remote it is. There's the road over there. Here comes Graham. This is Northumberland at its best. Wild and isolated. Oh, I love it. We'll have a mooch over here before we go and find this waterfall. In our wisdom, we made a decision to leave the rucksacks back on them crags that we found. But uh, if we find anywhere over here to camp, like that plateau or anything, obviously we need to explore. We've got the drawback of having to go back for the rucksacks. But it was a decision we were prepared to make. Right. Let's have an explore round and we'll see what we can find. There's the rocks where the rucksacks are over there, just just there. Just there. There's Grimer in a breather, I don't think he fancied this. And this plateau I've found, it's uh, it's flat but solid rocks look. There's that plateau over there we found, but it's actually man-made, that reminds of an old wall. And it's actually solid rock, so you can't really get your pegs in. But we feel very remote, and yet the road is just in the valley over there. Probably two, two and a half miles away. Right, oh it's quarter to six. We've been on our right trek past Carter Pike. We've been miles up there to a waterfall, and an old ruin, and an old cottage. An old water, an old waterfall, but uh, we found them nice crags. But at the end of the day, so boggy and hard in this heat and humidity. We we had a chat, and we come back to Carter Pike, and we're going to climb back up there because one, we get the views, and two, an easier walk out in the morning. At least we can say we've had a good explore and it's an area we've seen and we quite possibly wouldn't come back to. The pike itself up here is smashing, but the area we explored, not so good. But we've done it, we've enjoyed it. It seems every camp I do, 
is a difficult part of it. And I've got sunglasses on now because I've had my eyes tested again. And I've got the very slight, very slight start of that uh, wet macular degeneration. So basically, you need to stop the glare on your eyes. I eat a good diet anyway, so that's not a bother, but stop the glare on the eyes, preserve them as long as I can. This is what happens a bit when you have 30 years driving your car as an engineer and you don't bother wearing sunglasses because I never wear sunglasses so I'll start using them. I haven't got no issues, there's nothing to worry about but it's the very start of it. Obviously in the old days people get to the 60s and they ain't got long left so all these things don't matter but these days you hope to live into your 90s and what have you so all these illnesses come to the fore don't they? So. I'm doing what I can to preserve myself. Hey! <laughs> so I'm just sat here on the side of the can on this nice bench. I've just had my dinner. I've just spread out at the minute, look as you can see. I've got a nice brew on the go. I'm a gentleman, so I'm making Graham a coffee because he didn't bring a cup. I've got my rucksack here. Basically, I'm just chilling. I'm going to have a nice pitch just next to the can. And hopefully, if the weather holds off, me and Graham will sit here tonight having a chat. Nice. We'll catch you later. Hello there. Well, the midges have come out. It's still blowing a bit of a breeze, but the midges keep coming out and biting us. So I've had to uh, put the old midge net on. Now, last week, when I did that camp on the hill fort and had this, the storm coming, my, it was a proper storm. It's the first time I've ever lost a tarp. I'm thinking, I need a configuration I can use in the wind. Because I just love a tarp and bivy. Well, I think I might have found it. We'll turn the camera around and I'll show you. This pitch is called the star pitch. You have a, you, you peg down the four corners on about a three foot guy line. You put a walking pole in the centre and you lift it up and then you can tighten the tarp. Now, I've got it quite high here. Now, also, because we're on the tube, it's and you expect the wind, I've put a centre small. I've got all my guy lines attached with a carabiner and then just a normal adjustable hitch an adjustable tent line down to a peg so i've got four small ones like that in the center then i've got my four main ones carabiner again normal adjuster then i've got a longer line now i can lift this up by extending the walking pole and slackening the lines off or i could drop the pole and pull it even tighter to the floor in the wind. Now how I've modified it from what I've seen, obviously the Cheviot wind, it changes direction in an instant. One minute it's this way, then it's that way. Well obviously, look, carabiner, long line for the walking pole, that's me door. If the wind suddenly come from this direction, unhook that, put a guy line, take me walking pole on the other side. Well, I could put my walking pole on that side. How easy is that? And it's so tight, it's just not moving at all. And when you get inside it, have a look at this. It's ridiculous. Look at that. Look at it. It got soaking wet, this ground. Soaked. Oh. That's, that's my full length bivy. I mean, it really could get three people in here with ease. It's absolutely fantastic. So this, and, and if you open it like this, if you found a stick or something, you could do multiple openings for the space. Graham's got this new walk-in pole tent. He's tried a Gram Counter v, VLT. Gram, that means Gram Counter, very light tent. But it's about a kilo. It's not big enough for me because I'm six foot three. And I use a wide mat. So I can see now there's not enough space in there for me. But that's... A, it's an excellent tent. I'm really impressed with it. I don't know what it is about a tarp. I just love them. I love them to bits. The joys of a tarp and bivy. A star configuration or mushroom configuration, whatever you want to call it. Plenty of room for two or three people under there. I can have four doors if I want. And I can have one door. It's an amazing pitch, look at it. 
I could have my door some facing the Cheviots over there. I might have my door facing the Cheviots actually. And then when I'm lying in there, I can look out at the Cheviots. I think we'll do that. I've actually been given a water quality meter to test Catorially. I'll put a link in the description of the website. Have a look on the website. There's loads of information about it. So you open it up. It takes two batteries. You open it up and you test your water. You have to calibrate it at home first. So let's have a look at it. This is tap water from home. We won't be wasting it. We'll be having a brew. A brew with a view. So we'll just test it again. I must have to turn it off. Let's just turn it off because it was going through various readings. I'm still learning, obviously. Just one press to turn it on, and then we just press that, take your reading. That's come up average again. I think what we'll do, we'll take some uh, notes of the readings. And a pen. Right, this is your tap water. And if we press this one, there's our readings there, full readings. We'll go through those in a minute. That gives us all our various readings. It's coming up average for that. We'll turn that off. I don't need to use that water right now. I'll put it back in my bottle. Right, what we've got now, we've got some water out of the stream. Let's have a look at that. Wow, that's proper peaty water. It's brown. So we're going to test this one now. This is the brown peaty water. Oh, yeah, look, that's come up poor. That's actually a bright red reading, that is. So if we press this one, there's our readings for the poor. That's got bacteria, viruses and everything in it. So what I'm going to do, we'll throw that away. In this other cup, we're going to filter the water and see if it makes a difference. Right, let's filter a bit of this water and have a look. Only take a minute. You might as well see how it works, and then we'll go through the readings. Well, I'm just curious if it's still going to come up poor now it's been filtered. Well, that is a surprise. It's still come up as poor, and that's been filtered. There's our different readings. I'll, I'll go through these later. <coughs> well, that was interesting, wasn't it? Now, I'll just tell a bit about it. It does not directly test for viruses or bacteria, but rather... The TOC and the COD indirectly reflect the contamination in the water. It's not possible to tell a minimum amount in the water. However, the easy way to see how many bacteria and viruses is in the water is to check the TOC and the COD levels. Zero TOC and COD 
they indicate no viruses etc no organic or organic carbon whatsoever now TDS is calcium chloride sodium chloride magnesium sulfate and potassium nitrate COD is nitrate organic sulfide and ferrite TOC is bacteria virus weed killer and PAHs and UV275 is residual, residual chlorine indirect humus micromolecular organic matter and aromic compounds it's got all these different things but uh, it's parts per million and you get a good thorough instruction book with it but what I like best about it it's the colour it comes up obviously excellent water comes up blue good water comes green average water comes yellow and poor water comes red obviously you can't really see the display out here but if you cover it with your hand you can now <coughs> I was really I was really surprised then that after filtering that water it's still poor that means because it's probably got uh, particles in it and what have you whether it's any use for wild camping or not come to your own conclusions it's an excellent bit of kit personally I think if you're going to do say say for instance the West Highland Way and things like that you can filter your water and you can also test it with this because on the West Highland Way people have been getting dodgy tummies because there's so many people using that trail the excrement and that that's in the land it's getting nearer and nearer to the streams it's filtering through so obviously this is a good indicator of the quality even after you've filtered it like we've just filtered that with the soya and it's still coming up poor but obviously that's that's probably because uh, it's not catching whatever's in it I'd, I'd still trust the soya and drink it after I've boiled it obviously but this is a good valuable commodity I think I'll be using it a bit more and as the videos progress we'll get to know it a bit more it's a bit complicated to remember it all now like some of it's uh, one of them in particular is solids and let's have a look see if I can remember yeah the TOC is your bacteria and viruses and the COD is your organics and that means like your bits and pieces that's left after excrement and things like that it's going to be very you know it's very interesting to to carry it forward excellent bit of kit i'll be putting a link in the description have a look on the website i'll put a few photographs as well it's very comprehensive i think last night's testing of the quality meter was a bit flawed because uh, i had some cross contamination going on so i'm going to give it a, a, another go now I'm sitting in the cabin. I've got some Nestle's Pure, Pure Life bottled water. We'll test that first. We'll turn it on. And we're going to test this. Right. Straight away, that's come up excellent. We'll have a look at the readings so you can see them. There's the different readings for that one. So we'll turn that off. We'll give it a shake. Now I'm curious if this tap water comes at average again because when I first had this, the tap water come up good. Not, never excellent, but good. And last night it come up average. I don't know whether that's because it's been in me bag in the heat or what. So let's have a look at the tap water. A full glass of tap water. Let's stick it in. Dear me, look at that. <clears throat> That's come up average. There's your readings. So that's only come up average. That's meant to be good quality water. I'll go through the readings in a minute. But right, we'll turn that off. We're going to do the filtered water now. I know it's filtered because I've put my cap in there so I don't get the two mixed up. Turn it on. Now 
and that's come up with a red display which is poor see the readings So that's come up poor. We'll turn that off. And then we're going to do the, there's no cap in it, that's the unfiltered water. Obviously that's come up poor again, but we knew it would. There's the readings, look. So that's poor again. Obviously the, the parts per million you should be able to see off the video. But the strange thing is, on the bump it's got... It is recommended to take water samples to professional institutions for testing when the screen colour is yellow, which indicates average water. Now that's my tap water. The red screen colour, which was the hill water, signifies poor water quality, which has to be tested by a professional organisation and the quality of the water must be improved. Well, obviously, you filter it, so you take, you're hoping, hopefully taking out most of the bad bits, and then you're going to boil it anyway. But it does make me wary now that the filtered, and even when I've filtered the water, it still comes up poor. So I'm thinking, perhaps you can't drink it after all if you don't want to get a dodgy tummy. Now, on my next trip, I've got a drinking straw that's meant to filter out viruses. I shall give that a go, and we'll see whether it makes a difference to make it the hill water average or good but uh, the worrying thing is the tap water i mean it tastes nice i'll drink it it tastes nice it looks clear and yet that tester is saying there's bits in it now obviously i've put the chart in the pictures which shows what the bits the various readings mean I'll do a quick pan round because we're going to get in the tents now because the, the midges are going mad. Well, I'll, I'll be in my tarp anyway. There's the reservoir. Come round to the chibi. The chibi's clear tonight, isn't it? Look at all the chibi's. There's the, the hills just over the borders of Scotland. And this is the moors, isn't it, by Carter Pike? There's me low pitch tarp, I'm over the moon with that. That's looking up towards Kielder. There's Graham in his trekking pole tent. If we come round here, just more moors. So it's pretty much more barren this side, isn't it? Obviously when you get to Kielder over there, you'll get the trees, but these are just moors. Whereas your Cheviots over there, you've got nice rolling hills. Very lucky with the choice up here, aren't we? Very lucky. Well, I'm just not used to the space in, in a tarp like this. I mean, you could get a person there, two people there. I mean, it's ridiculous, look. <laughs> what a pitch. It's fabulous. I can't wait to go up on the hills now on the, on the Cheeve. It's when the wind starts. When it gets really windy, I'm going to drop it down six or seven inches. And if it's like on, on the evening, I'll lift it up even higher. I can see me playing with this configuration a, a fair bit. Obviously, because it's a big tarp, look, there's condensation coming already. See, see there, look. Because it's single skin, isn't it? You know, you always get that. Look at the views of the tube, it's behind me, look. It's fabulous, isn't it? I might turn my bivy round and have it crossways, then I can just lie on my side looking at the cheviots. In fact, I'll do that in a minute. I've just been shuffling around like a slug, 
and I've managed to get from over there to here. So now, look at that. I'm lying looking at the Cheviots. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, the room under this thing is ridiculous, isn't it? Room for two over there. I mean, we could easily get another person on this side. And look, I've got me full views. You just don't get this with a tent. I mean, this is the nearest thing to a tent I've ever done, done with a tarp. And yet, look, absolutely fantastic. I'm just lying here, look, looking at the Cheviots. Wee-hee! That'll be me view in the morning. I can't wait. Well, it's starting to draw in now. I won't be doing any more filming tonight because it's too dark. I didn't bother bringing a filming light with me. I can't take this off because the midges are going mad. I'll be sleeping in that. So we'll see you in the morning. Good morning. I've just woke up. It's half past five. I'm going to go back to sleep for a bit. But uh, the wind has really got up. The tarp hasn't moved. It's doing a fair bit of flapping. Uh, it's not gone anywhere. It just needs refining, I think. Maybe use a thicker tarp, get it tighter. For that. That's what you wake up to in a tarp. The sun coming up behind the Cheviots. Beautiful. Yeah, this is a treat for me. I'm just lying in the in the bivvy, looking at my views. I'm just doing my, my breakfast. I'm only having some of these noodles for my breakfast and a cup of coffee. But uh, I'm lying here and I'm able to sort out all my stuff. Under here, it's amazing. It's, it, the wind's really getting up. A lot of condensation under the tarp, look. That's because it's flat, isn't it? It's like that surface against the cold. But uh, it's not going anywhere. I think if this door wasn't in, it would be a lot tighter. So if it was really windy, I think maybe drop the door before you go to bed. But when I get up, I'll be experimenting with it. But let's have a look at this view out there, Bivy. While we're looking at the views, I'll just mention using that configuration of the tarp, the bivvy was bone dry inside and out. No condensation anywhere on the bivvy or the sleeping bag. So that configuration was a winner. Leave, leave no trace as always, just a bit of flattened grass. We'll have a quick look at the view. Bit of mist on the hills over there. The moorland. And we'll come down to the Cheviot Hills and the reservoir down there, Echo Crags. The Cheviots look amazing from this uh, distance, all them lovely rolling hills. So we're hiking out and we're just looking at this cairns on the Cheviots and that prominent one to the left of the main hill. I think that's the shill. It's, over, it's either that or Graham thinks it might be the Orco cairn. But either way, it's lovely to see the various uh, Summit from over here. It's a nice pleasant walk in, walk out, isn't it? Looking at the reservoir. Down to the Scottish border, down there. This is where we started our camp last night. There's England. Looking down to the reservoir. And here's Scotland. So obviously we were in Scotland on the camp. So all in the camp now, we're back at the car. Welcome to Scotland. Been a nice camp. I've not done a uh, car to park before. I've enjoyed it. Very boggy, very barren. Not quite as nice as the rolling hills of the Cheviots, but beautiful just the same. And how nice to have a look across to the Cheviots from this side. So if you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And as always, I love my comments. Thanks to anybody that's bought me a coffee. I'll put a mention in the ending title as well. Thank you very much. See you in the next one.